Okay, good morning. So, we'll go on to our uh, lesson 2 about aggregate. So, this will uh, cover up the full topics for uh, prelim. So, one of your desired learning outcomes is to understand the importance and uses of aggregate and to learn how to determine specific gravity, moisture content, bulk density, void content, and gradation and fineness modulus of aggregate. So those are the most important uh, characteristics of aggregates. So when we say aggregates, it refers to coarse particulate rock-like uh, material consisting of a collection of disparate elements of size ranging from a small fraction of uh, millimeter to tens of millimeters. So it, it includes uh, natural gravel, crash rock, sand, uh, recycled concrete, slag and synthetic or artificial aggregates. So I'm sure most of you nakita naman siguro mo kung what is an aggregate no? Kung ano siya sa actual. So in layman's term, aggregate means uh, bato, rock or mga buhangin. Uh, coarse aggregate and fine aggregates. So it is an inert material when bound together into conglomerated mass by cement and water form concrete, mortar or plaster. So the aggregate components about 60 to 75 percent of the total mass of concrete. Okay, so ginagamit siya pang uh, band sa cement and mga mortar. So it gives the body the concrete and reduce shrinkage. So ano ano ba yung mga gamit ng aggregates? So sa field of civil engineering, uh, napaka importante ng ano aggregates lalong lalo na sa construction. So, paggawa ng mga building, uh, kalsada, so gamit na gamit siya. Siya yung tipo na hindi pwedeng mawala. Isa sa mga pinaka-importante yung material sa uh, construction. One of the most important uses of aggregates is uh, used as an underlying material for foundations and pavements. And as ingredients in Portland cement and asphalt concrete. So, bago ka mag uh, magpar ng concrete sa isang structure, so, kailangan mo muna maglagay ng gravel bedding. So, yung bedding, yung gravel na nilalagay doon is also an aggregate. Or it's also, also uh, called as base courses. It can add stability to a structure, provide a drainage layer, and protect the structure from damage. So usually, aggregates act as a filler to reduce the amount of cement paste needed in the uh, mix. So in addition, aggregates uh, have greater volume stability than the uh, cement paste. So therefore, maximizing the amount of aggregates to a certain extent improves the quality and economy of the mix. So it is therefore uh, significantly important to obtain right type and quality of aggregates at site. So they should be clean hard, strong, durable, and graded in size to achieve utmost economy from the uh, paste. So we have uh, different classification of aggregates. So uh, we have the, on the basis of ge geological origin, we have the natural aggregates and the artificial aggregates. So when we say natural aggregates, uh, it it came from crushing from quarries of igneous, igneo, sedimentary, or metamorphic rock. So, example nyan is gravels and sand, which was reduced by uh, natural agencies. Yan yung mostly ma makikita nyo sa, ano, sa mga ilog, sa pa. So, because of natural, ano, uh, natural na pangyayari, sila yung mga tinatangay na uh, tubig, mga bato, from mal malalaking bato, then, kapag ginadala ng agos ng tubig, uh, syempre, abang nagtatravel siya sa bodies of water, tumatama siya sa ibang mga uh, malalaking bato. Kaya, yun, uh, lumiliit yung size niya. So, pag sinabi naman natin artificial aggregate, sample nito yung mga broken bricks, blast furnace slag, and synthetic aggregate. So, some example of uh, artificial aggregate, so we have the broken, blast synthetic, which is produced primarily by process materials such as clay and shale used for light weight concrete. Uh, blast furnace slug from slow cooling of the slug followed by crushing. Okay, so 
on the basis of size we have two classification the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregates ito yung pinaka ano common na classification ng aggregates so when we say coarse aggregate is an aggregate retained on 4.75 mm or number for sheep which is identified as coarse they obtain by natural disintegration or by artificial crushing of rocks so the maximum size of aggregate can be 80 mm so the size is uh, governed by the thickness of section spacing of reinforcement clear cover mixing handling and placing methods so aggregate more than 20 mm size are seldom used for reinforced cement concrete structural members so 20 mm almost one inch so conditions for maximum size of course aggregate so one it shall easily fit into the forms and in between reinforcing bars so dapat uh, pag may mga reinforcing bars in between non uh, madali siyang maka flow or uh, pasok so kung babara siya sa uh, between sa mga reinforcing bars so ano yun uh, mali or tinatawag hindi siya magandang uh, aggregate kasi ang mangyayari nun, yung concrete mo, hindi siya mabubuo or mapoform. Magkakaroon ka ngayon ng mga uh, weakness. Kung baga yung uh, strength ng uh, structure mo is uh, hihina. Kasi pwede magkaroon ng mga voids or empty spaces sa loob ng uh, structures mo or uh, frames or usually magkakaroon ka ng mga honeycomb honeycomb yung parang sa bahay ng mabuyog so marami kang mga gaps sa loob ng mga beam mo or column usually pagka ganun uh, ano yun, back job or re job lalo sa mga malalaking structure so dapat make sure na tama yung ginagamit mo ng aggregate site kasi napakalaking ano yun eh napakahalaga o tulad nito, sa example na to so, kung baga dyan, mayroong mga malaking aggregates dyan na nagbara. So, during buhos. So, eh, this is a column, no? So, pag buhos mo siya ng concrete, may mga nagmalaking aggregates na nagbara dyan. So, yung concrete mo ngayon, hindi makakapag-flow. Uh, ang maganda uh, sa loob ng, ano, ng forms. Okay? So, ito ngayon na mangyayari. So, gakaroon ng mga voids, mga honeycomb, ito yung mga honeycomb. So, make sure na dapat yung size mo ng aggregate, lalo yung coarse aggregate na gagamitin mo, is makakapasok doon sa ano sa spaces between the, uh, the steel or reinforcement. Okay, so, yun ang dapat nyo natutandaan. Para may iwasan yung mga ganitong uh, failure sa concreting. Usually, pagkaganyan, bakbak talaga yan. They redo. So, sayang yung ano. Uh, materyales, yung pagod at yung manpower. So, malugi ka ngayon as an engineer. Okay? So, when we say fine aggregates naman, so it is uh, layman's term, bohangin or sand are those that passes through the number for sheep and predominantly retained by a number 200 uh, sheep. It is also manufactured from large pieces of aggregate by crushing, grinding, or rolling. So, kanina yung coarse aggregate, yung mga ano, na-retain sa number 4 sheep and fine aggregates naman nag-pass through the number 4 uh, sheep pero na-retain naman sa number 200. Okay? So, classification naman ng aggregates on the basis of shape, we have the rounded aggregate, irregular aggregate, angular, and flaky aggregate. So, when we say ang rounded, so mga bilog-bilog para mga pebbles na maliit come from river or seashore and it's unsuitable for high strength uh, concrete pavement. So rounded aggregates produce minimum voids uh, about 30% in the concrete. So kaya di siya magandang ano, gamitin sa mga high strength na mga structure. So they have a uh, minimum ratio of surface area to the volume and the cement phase required is uh, minimum. It has poor interlocking bond makes it unsuitable for high strength concrete and pavement. For irregular aggregates, so it has uh, voids about 36% and require more cement phase as compared to rounded aggregates. 
because of irregularity, its shape, they develop good bond and are suitable for making ordinary. So, pwede siya sa for ordinary concrete lang. Usually sa, sa local, dito sa local construction, usually sa mga bahay-bahay ang lagyan natin na ginagamit na ano, na aggregate size, a shape ng aggregate is a uh, derounded aggregate, no? Ito yung pinaka-common available sa local market natin. Wala dito yung mga crash or angular na mga aggregate. So, angular aggregates have sharp, angular, and rough uh, particles having maximum voids about 40%. So, angular aggregate provide very good bond that in the earlier two which are most suitable for high-strength concrete and pavement. So, the requirement of cement phase is relatively uh, more. So, this is the, si the shape of the uh, aggregates, the angular aggregates, which is the most uh, advisable na gamitin para sa mga high strength na mga structure or sa mga mataas na mga structure. Uh, platy, platy aggregates, sometimes uh, known as elongated aggregates, which the least lateral dimension should be less than 0.6 times the mean dimension. So, picky aggregate generally orient in one place with water and our voids underneath. So, yung mga voids daw na sa ilalim, they adversely affect durability and are restricted to maximum of 15%. So, uh, very sharp and rough aggregate particles or picky and elongated particles require more fine material to produce a workable concrete. So, accordingly, the water requirement and therefore, the cement content increases. So, excellent concrete is made by using crushed stone, but the particles should be roughly uh, cubical in shape. Okay? So, on the basis naman of unit weight, so when we say classification of aggregates, we may say lightweight, it is commonly used as ingredients in the manufacture of lightweight concrete. So, for making lightweight masonry blocks, to improve their thermal and insulating properties and nailing characteristics, and lightweight floor and roof slabs. So, the lightweight fine aggregate is with bulk density less than uh, 1,120 kg per cubic uh, meter and lightweight coarse aggregate is with bulk density less than 880 kg per cubic uh, meter. So, example of lightweight is dolomite, uh, pumice, tinder, and clay. So, for no normal weight, which is commonly used in manufacture of normal weight concrete, asphalt, concrete, and roadway, the average values of specific gravity for sun and gravel are 2.6 and 2.65 respectively. But, uh, the bulk density of normal weight aggregate is around 1,520 to 1,680 kg per cubic uh, meter. So, syempre, dyan, naka, dyan nagbilang yung sun, gravel, granite, limestone, at sandstone. Then, then, for heavyweight uh, aggregate with high density and use primarily in the manufacture of heavyweight concrete, so employed for protection against nuclear radiation and as a bomb shelter. So, the unit weight varies from 2,400 kg per cubic meter with a specific gravity range from 4 to 4.6. So, ang heavyweight daw ginagamit lang sa, ano, sa mga nuclear kung saan napaka-high ng radiation and as a bomb uh, shelter. So, let's go to uh, physical properties of aggregate. So, do you have any questions regarding the uh, regarding the classification of aggregates? So, if there's none, you can go to physical properties. So, if you have question, you can ano, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Okay? So, for physical properties, we have the strength of aggregate. So, majority of normal aggregates are considerably stronger than concrete. So, strong aggregates are necessary for having good strength of the aggregate. So, a good average value of crushing strength of aggregate is 2,000 newton per uh, square millimeter. So, rocks which are commonly used as aggregates have a compressive strength much higher than the usual range of concrete strength. So, some of the tests uh, conducted for measuring the strength of the aggregate or strength evaluations are the uh, crushing test, impact test, and 10% fines uh, test. So, in our case, so, dili na nato siya makonduct yung mga uh, test na yan.
So of this, uh, the first one is the most reliable. Generally, the specifications prescribe 45% for aggregate uh, must be used for concrete other than re wearing surface and 30% for concrete for wearing surfaces. So the hardness of aggregate uh, is the ability of aggregate to withstand wear or load or applied pressure. So this hardness is depending on the type of parent rock. So the test that can obtain hardness is the abrasion test. So a satisfactory aggregate should have an abrasion value of not more than 30% for a aggregate used for wearing surfaces and 50% for aggregates used for non-wearing surfaces. So in short, hardness means uh, dapat yung aggregates can resist the damaging effect of loads. Okay, hindi siya basta-basta mag -crack -crack. So toughness is the resistance of aggregate to failure by impact. So it can be determined by aggregate impact test. So the aggregate impact value shall not exceed 45% by weight for aggregate used for concrete other than those used for wearing surfaces and 30% for concrete for wearing uh, surfaces. Okay. The durability, uh, durability of aggregate is the ability of the aggregate to withstand external or internal damaging attack or in other words the soundness of aggregate. So this can be obtained by carrying out the soundness test. And for porosity, so aggregate normally have pores of various sizes. So when I say pores, uh, butas butas. So aggregates will absorb water when it is dry, uh, but normally release water in the concrete mix when it is uh, wet. So the amount of water and its uh, rate of permission depends on the size and volume of aggregate. So since the aggregate uh, comprises of 75% of the concrete volume, so napakalaki. So it's essential to note that porosity of an aggregate contribute to the overall porosity of concrete. So here are the list of tests uh, to be conducted for an uh, aggregate. So for our laboratory, we will just conduct uh, physical properties test, the specific gravity, and the water absorption test. So, kinilang doha. Ang pwede natin, ano, uh, makonduct na experiment. Okay? So, what are the characteristic uh, affecting uh, concrete behavior? So, we have number one, uh, controlled by porosity, which is letter A, the density. So, we have this apparent specific gravity so apparent specific gravity okay so bulk density is the rate of aggregate that would fill a unit volume which affects the following uh, concrete behavior the mix design the workability and unit weight okay absorption and surface uh, moisture which the amount of water the aggregates absorb is important in the design of Portland cement concrete. So since moisture captured in the aggregate void is not available to react with the cement or to improve the workability of the plastic concrete. So as you can see, so based on the uh, state of the aggregate, so open dry or dry, so dapat ang moisture niya, total moisture is wala. So, so air dry, so it has less than potential absorption. So saturated surface, dry so equal to potential absorption and so damp or wet greater than absorption so kumbaga uh, ito o ito yung uh, size nya so sa labas meron pa rin uh, sobra sobra yung absorption nya or too big so we will conduct this uh, experiment okay So we have here another figure uh, which is voids and moisture absorption of aggregates. This is the bone dry or air dry. So this is the permeable void. So this is the void or gap or butas sa isang aggregate. So this is the solid part. So ito yung mga impermeable voids na sa loob. Okay, so this is the air dry. So magkakaroon ng moisture. Ito lang. 
And pag saturated surface dry, ibig sabihin ay uh, yung permeable voids uh, puno siya ng ano, tubig. Pero yung surface niya sa labas is ano pala yan, dry. Okay, kapag moist or basta or wet, so pati itong uh, buong permeable void basta, pati yung sa labas niya uh, wet pa rin. So, yun ang tawag na moist or wet na aggregates. Okay? So, absorption is defined as the moisture content in the SSD condition. Is surface, dry, uh, surface dry condition. So, moist aggregates have moisture content in excess of the SSD condition. So, when you say SSD, so, ito lang yung anya, basa. Doon lang sa permeable voids. Pero yung labas niya, uh, tuyo pa rin. Okay? Then, clean moisture is the difference. So, between the actual moisture content of the aggregate and the moisture content in the SSD condition. So, absorption and surface moisture affects the following concrete behaviors. So, how will we compute the moisture content in aggregate? So, moisture content is the weight moist or weight of moist aggregate minus the weight of dry aggregate divided by the weight of dry times 100%. So, that would be gives you the uh, moisture content of the aggregate. So, we have here some exa uh, examples. So, you are asked to uh, compute the total moisture content and pre-moisture content of a sample of sand which has the following properties. So, giving a moist mass with 625.2 grams, dry mass of 589.9 grams, and absorption of 1.6%. Uh, so, for the solution, you will first compute for the mass of water, which is the difference, difference of the moist mass over the dried mass. So, 625.2 less the 589.9, that will give you 35.3 gram. So, that is the mass of the water. So, in yung tubig na sa aggregates. Okay? And for the total moisture content, so, we will just divide it by the uh, dry mass times 100% that will give you 6% okay so since uh, for letter B pre-moisture content so ito yung total moisture content 6% na kumpita natin less lang natin yung absorption so the total pre-moisture content is 4.4% okay so ganun lang kasimple ganun lang kadali yung mga computation natin yakang yakang yan then we have the soundness which refers to the ability of aggregate to resist excessive change in volume as a result of changes in physical conditions. Isabihin natin sa ano, ano siya, uh, weather resistant. How he resists uh, uh, the uh, weather sa bago-bagong panahon. So these physical conditions that affect the soundness of aggregate are the freezing, the towing, variation in temperature, alternate wetting and drying under normal conditions and wetting and drying in salt water. So, aggregates which are porous, weak, and containing any undesirable extraneous matters undergo excessive volume change when subjected to the above conditions. So, aggregates which undergo more than the specified amount of volume change is said to be unsound aggregates. So, it if concrete is liable to be exposed to the action of frost, coarse and fine aggregates which are going to be used should be subjected to a soundness test. Okay, let's go to specific gravity. So, it's the weight volume characteristic of aggregates which are not an important indicator of aggregate quality. But, they are important for concrete uh, mix design. So, SG or specific gravity is the mass of a material divided by the mass of an equal volume of distilled water is uh, commonly used. So, most natural aggregates have specific gravities between 2.4 and 3. So, there are four types of specific gravity which are defined uh, based on how voids in the aggregate uh, particles are considered. So, three of these types are bulk dry bulk saturated surface dry and apparent specific gravity are widely accepted and used in Portland cement and asphalt concrete uh, mix 
So uh, these are uh, defined by the following uh, formula. So just go over with these uh, formulas. Try to study them. And we'll go with the to the So compute sa mga laboratory experiment natin, sa mga test natin. Okay. Then bulk unit uh, weight and bulk in aggregate. So it is needed for proportioning of Portland cement concrete mixtures. So it can be determined by the uh, following uh, formula. So it is uh, the ratio of the weight of the aggregate divided by the volume of the uh, container. So if the bulk dry specific gravity of the aggregate is known, the percentage of voids uh, between aggregate particles can be determined as follows. So, strength and modulus is the strength of Portland cement concrete and as per concrete cannot exceed that of the aggregates. So, usually the tensile strength of aggregates ranges from 0.7 to 16 megapascal. So, while the compressive strength ranges from 35 megapixel to 350 uh, megapascal. So, usually the modulus of elasticity, elasticity of aggregates is not uh, measured. So let's go to gradation. Uh, when we say gradation, it describes the particle size distribution of the aggregate. So the particle size distribution is an important attribute of the aggregates. Large aggregates are economically advantageous in Portland cement and asphalt concrete as they have less surface area and therefore requires uh, less binder. However, large aggregate mixes, whether asphalt or uh, Portland cement, are harsher and more difficult to work in two place. So, isa sa mga test na na conduct para ma check ang gradation ng isang aggregate is the shib analysis. So, again, so pray nyo ulit kay hindi natin mapapurang tong shib analysis. So, shib analysis operation of dividing a sample of aggregate into various fractions, each consisting of particles of the same size. So, it is conducted to determine the particle size distribution in a sample of aggregates, which we call gradation. So, ito yung example ng ano, uh, shib analysis of sand. And then, so ito yung mga sizes ng shib. Then, we have the uh, mass na retained. So, sample is at 187 grams. So, when we conduct shape analysis, so it has series of uh, sheep. So, we have the cumulative mass retained, mass passing, and percent passing. So, example ito, mass retained, wala, walang natira. So, zero uh, na retained. Then, sa 5 mm size, merong uh, 6 grams na retained. Then, as you go on, may mga na retained. Okay. Uh, we also have to do the mass of the pan for the total uh, mass. And the cumulative mass retained, uh, 0. And 0 plus 6, so 6. 6 plus 17, 23. 23 plus 32, 55. 55 plus 48, and so on. Till makabot mo ng 287. So, kung hindi kayo nag-equal yung dalawang ito, ibig sabihin may mali or hindi nyo na-considered yung mass ng pan. Okay, for the mass passing, so we have uh, 287 minus 0, 287. Then we have 287 minus 6, 281, 281 minus 23, 264, 264 minus 55, 232, and so on and so forth. Then for the percent passing, so this is the total mass, 287. Uh, 287 Divided by 287, that is 100. Then 281 divided by 287 times 100, that is 98%. And 264 divided by 287 times 100 equals 92. 232 divided by 287 times 100, that is 81. And so on and so forth. So, this is an example. Okay. So, we have here the semi log aggregate radiation chart showing a radiation example. So on the x-axis, we have the sheet size in mm, and the uh, y-axis, we have the percentage passing. 
so that is rate 0 to 100 so equal distributed so we have here the shift size so ito yung pinaka fine pino na sa pinaka manoking uh, size so dito sa 25 size we have a 100% passing so ito din lahat ng samples dyan uh, nag pass walang narating and so yun it's in the logarithmic uh, graph semi-log okay we have some example here so a sheet analysis test was performed on sample of an aggregate and produced the following result <laughs> so we have the sizes of the sheet and the amount uh, retained okay so you are asked to calculate the percent passing each sheet and draw a 0.45 power gradation chart with the use of spreadsheet program so these are the solutions so lagay mo na yung size sheet size so mula sa pinaka malaki pinaka malaki ang butas pababa ang gas sa pino then syempre include mo yung uh, weight ng uh, pan or mass ng pan okay so in tabulate lang natin amount retained then the cumulative amount so 0 plus 32.2 32.2 and 32.2 plus 56.9 so 90.1 and 90.1 plus 83.1 that is 170.2 and so on and so forth okay for the cumulative percent retained so that is equal to uh, 6 I uh, 33.2 divided by 510.9 times 100% that is equals to 6 then uh, 90.1 divided by 510.9 times 100 so that is equals to 18 so please take note na yung mga values na nandito is ano siya nakarounded na round off okay and so on and so forth nang sa pating lahat okay for the percent passing that is 100 minus uh, this so 100 minus 0 100 100 minus 6, 94, 100 minus 18, 82, 100 minus 34, 66, and so on, and so forth. Okay, so gawin lang ka-simple. Add minus lang. So, uh, in making the graph, so the first step in drawing the graph is to compute the seed sheet size to the 0.45 power using the metric sheet. So, ito, gawin natin yung convert natin into 0.45 power condition so ito nga yung excel so ilagay lang natin yung sheet size kanina uh, ano nga yun ito nmm so that is uh, 4.75 2.36 uh, 2 1.18 0 0.6 0.3 15 0.075 okay ayan so hindi nakasama yung pan <clears throat> then she uh the ship size to the 0.45 power so that is equal to 4.75 raised to 0.45 okay Ok, kuha natin siya into Decrease natin yung 2 decimal Ok, so drag lang natin Ok Then for the percent passing uh, 19482 So ito yun So ready natin dito sa, gra uh, sa table 100 94, 82, 66, 36, 29, 14, and 3.1. Okay. So, okay. So, ayan. Ngayon, uh, kaya punta. Insert tayo na chart scatter click natin yung scatter so ito so na ngayon yan 
so since the size of the uh, sheet point for the power is uh, meaningless so we will use the axis we will delete the uh, these values no? dapat ito yung mga values na ito ang nakalagay dun. so we will click this uh, x axis and delete ok sure nya in sa gradation so ang distance na sa pag graph sa x to x so we'll put here the sizes the ship power so yan so ito from 2.02 to 2.02 so, ito ngayon yung naging distance ng mga x values or ng ship size. Okay, for the uh, percent pass yung sizes ng y or the y coordinate. So, ganyan na nun. Between 0 and to 100. So, okay. Okay, so ngayon. Uh, okay. sa graph, right click natin yung graph then uh, select data mag insert tayo ngayon ng mga series so, so first uh, series name dapat ito yung nabas na size sheet and then for the series values so ito yun then for the series y values para pa 0 to 100 ok and add na naman isa isa Okay. Okay. Then add natin ulit yung 2. Okay. Then add another. Point 18. Okay. Wait lang. Wait lang. Wait lang. Okay. And add natin 0 0.6. Isa-isa yun -isa natin siya add. Okay, then add the net. Three. Okay, then add and again. Okay. Then add that ng last. This series, then okay, then okay. So, dapat ganito ang maging itsura ng graph ninyo. Good natin yan. Okay, ayan. Uh, then, change natin to ng color. So, ayan. So, change natin yung mga color nito. So, dapat maging ganyan yung itsura ng ano nyo. Graph nyo. Gradation graph. So, this called gradation graph. Okay. So, finest modulus. So, dito sa finest modulus is measure of defined aggregate gradation and used primarily for, for transmen. Uh, so, the finest modulus is 100 of the sum of the cumulative percentage weight retained on the uh, the sizes when the finest modulus is determined to find aggregate 
are not used, so the finest model for an array should be in the range of 2.3 to 3.1. So with the higher number being a coarser aggregate, so table 5.7 demonstrates the calculation of the finest uh, modulus. So to compute for the finest modulus, so we will get the uh, summation of the cumulative percentage retained by weight, so excluding the uh, weight of the uh, the fund. So that is 286 divided by 100. The percentage of individual fraction retained by weight. So that is equal to, yun, yun na yung ano, uh, finest modulus. Okay, so ito yung mga finest modulus ranges. So fine sand, 2.2.6. Medium sand, 2.62.9. Coarse sand, 2.93.2. Okay. And for your assignment, we have two problems here. So, sample of the aggregate. So, ito. And for number two, calculate the finest modulus of sample for the shape analysis. So, ito yun. Ito yung complete niya yung finest modulus of rest. Okay. So, that's all. So, just post your... Uh, Assignment sa LMS Canvas natin. So, if you have some questions, just drop by sa comment section. So, that's all for today. Thank you for listening. So, see you again next uh, meeting.